Hi, I'm Nathaniel. Welcome to my shop. Sure. So Flip This Dollhouse here, we're located in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and we're actually one of the largest dollhouse shops in the world. We've got almost a hundred dollhouses on display and tens of thousands of pieces of furniture and accessories for sale. Okay. Come check us out. So I'd like to give you a little tour today if you're interested. Uh -huh. Our first street here, we organize our shop into streets. Uh -huh. Our first street here is Cottage Lane. So that's where we put some of our smaller to medium sized houses. And our second street here is Mansion Avenue. This is where we put our larger houses. Our street over here is Fixer Upper Row. This is where we put some of the houses that need a little bit of love. Mm -hmm. So the idea of our business, Flip This Dollhouse, is we rescue old dollhouses that need love. Mm -hmm. So we don't like to hear that a dollhouse has been abandoned in someone's attic or basement. Mm -hmm. We like to rescue them and bring joy to new people with that dollhouse. Yeah, so over here we have the largest dollhouse in the shop. This one is the size of an elephant. So we, we call it the elephant in the room. It's 21 rooms. It took a gentleman four years to build it. Wow. And it's, it's funny because a lot of people don't realize how big it is until you stand next to it. Show really the scale. It's one of our haunted dollhouses. We've got three of them in stock right now, actually. So we've got it all decorated and all the trick-or-treaters out front. Um, in our shop, the holidays happen year round. Mm -hmm. So we have Christmas houses, Halloween houses, haunted houses, and they stay up year round. From here, we have departments around the store where we separate our furniture. Mm -hmm. So right here, this is our dining rooms and kitchen. Wow. Coming down here, we have our building supplies. Mm -hmm. And then this room over here, we call the museum. The reason we call it the museum is because on the right side is a couple private collections on display. So these are customers of, of ours that have purchased over 10 dollhouses Wow. and they display them here because they were running out of room in their house. And then on this side of the museum, the left side, we have all of these dollhouses which are for sale, mm -hmm. and all of the furniture and accessories inside are also for sale. So this is where we put some of the really special dollhouses, some of the collector's quality houses. Mm -hmm. um, we have houses of all different price ranges, sizes, styles. Um, most of our houses actually are in the $100 to $400 price range mm -hmm. with our current sale. So it's a really good time to come check out our shop if anyone's been thinking about it. Um, so much to see. Some people come in just for the inspiration. So that's partly why we have the private collection over here is the customer that bought these dollhouses, they bring them home and fix them up. Mm -hmm. And when they bring them back to the shop to display them, I do the interior design. Some of them are really elaborate, mm -hmm. but this collection, the collector really prefers handmade items and items from all over the world. Dollhouse, for example, the, the rugs are from Turkey. Um, dolls are from the UK. Okay. The stove is from Germany. And almost everything in the house is handmade or signed. I actually dress the beds. Mm -hmm. So the bedding is sewn by a designer in the miniature world, but I put it together and, and, and make it into a bed. So this is one of my favorite dollhouses in the private collection. Customer, he <laughs> has 10 dollhouses from the shop, uh -huh. and then this customer on the back wall has 14 dollhouses from our shop. So these rooms have been decorated by myself mm -hmm. and the customer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would make sure that they approved everything that we picked. Mm -hmm. This is the customer's favorite house. This is a Southern Colonial Mansion. Mm -hmm. um, so he's even got the attic decorated with things you might find in an attic. Uh, my favorite room in this house is the sunroom down here because if you zoom in on it, it really looks like a real room. say when people are looking for a, a place to put their dollhouse in the house, mm -hmm. I like to put dollhouses where the sun will shine in through the windows. And uh -huh. yes, yes, you have to worry about fading, uh -huh. but it looks really beautiful when the sunlight comes in the window of a dollhouse. 
So that's his favorite dollhouse, but he uh, made a point to purchase all different styles. Mm -hmm. This over here is a really rare dollhouse kit from the 90s called the Contemporary Ranch. Mm -hmm. It was from Real Good Toys. Mm -hmm. And I've been collecting dollhouses for 20 years. I probably owned three to 400 dollhouses. The girl that owns this dollhouse, she really put her personality into it. Uh -huh. So everything inside of there is really something that is important or special to her. Uh -huh. And I think that's what's really fun about dollhouses is you can really make them your own. I look in here and I smile because I know why everything was chosen. So this side of the museum, like I said, is for display. It's a mm -hmm. private collection. Mm -hmm. And then this side of the museum, everything's for sale. We have some incredible dollhouses over here. Mm -hmm. We have a, this Christmas tape that we've decorated for Christmas. Mm -hmm. We have this salt box colonial from 1776. This house we call our 70s house. So inside we've decorated it in all 1970s style mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. This is our abandoned house, which actually is set up on the inside like there have been squatters living there. Floor and... Yes. Good sense it. This house behind you uh -huh. is actually a model of someone's home in Brockton, Massachusetts. Oh, really? Yep, so it was a family that wanted to have a model of their home mm -hmm. to, to play with and display, okay. so they had it built. What's really cool about this dollhouse is it has a garage door that's not a pulley system, so there's a tension to it. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. We have some beautiful room boxes on display in the museum, such as these two. Look inside there, they're really made to look real. If you look at the front door and to the right yes. of that room, it's beautiful. Here we have a Victorian mansion. Okay. This one's really beautiful. Inside, the paintings on the wall are actual paintings that oh. the owner did mm -hmm. and they're copies of like Renoir's and, and, and other famous paintings. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. I, I kept those paintings in the house. This house is actually a model of a home in New Hampshire. This was built in 1980, so 40, 41 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And I love it when a dollhouse is actually a real floor plan. Mm -hmm. You know, you have some dollhouses like this one that are actually a bookcase turned yes, into a dollhouse. Exactly. But, um, and this is cute, this is great, but I love it when a house is actually a real house. <laughs> this one right here uh -huh. is from the 50s. It's a Betsy McCall dollhouse. Mm -hmm. So I was told that in the 50s, paper dolls were really popular. Okay. So they came out with a dollhouse to play with your paper dolls in. Oh, okay. We call it the Brady Bunch dollhouse, though, because of the staircase. Mm -hmm. It looks like the Brady Bunch living room. Yes. <laughs> but it, it, it's amazing to me that this dollhouse is 70 years old and it looks oh. so good. This one right here is incredible. It's one of the oldest dollhouses in the shop. Mm -hmm. It's from 1941, so it's 80 years old. Mm -hmm. But it's the only dollhouse we have in the shop mm -hmm. with an actual crawl space and oh. with working shutters. Wow. I think people forget what shutters were actually, they don't usually work. This one opens on the top wow. to access wow. that floor. And then to get to the first floor, you just shut that and open it here. So, 80 years old, this dollhouse. Wow. So this one is for sale in our museum. Uh -huh. And this one is really well done. I, I decorated the interior. Yes. I tried to make this one look really classy and neutral, and um, we even have a maid in here. So this house is one of our collector's qualities houses, and it okay. actually allows you to turn off the room's uh -huh. electricity one room at a time. Oh. Yeah. And then we, we add these lights. Lighting. Wow. This is the house I was telling you that has some real paintings in it. Of Renoirs and yeah. other famous artists. I decorated this house in a pastel color scheme, so everything is kind of pink, green, yellow, 
white. I always tell people, customers and collectors, that if you can decorate a dollhouse and make all of the rooms coordinate together, uh -huh. it's more pleasing to the eye. Yes. Just like decorating a real house, yes. and you make the rooms flow into each other. It's similar with the dollhouse because you see all the rooms at the same time. Yeah. So it looks nice when it coordinates. I love decorating dollhouses. That's my favorite thing. Yes. I'm not a builder. Uh -huh. I'm not really a carpenter. I'm uh -huh. a decorator. Uh -huh. So when we get in a dollhouse, the first thing we do is clean it up. Okay. And then we decorate it. Uh, okay. And we always, we look at the house and we figure out what inspires us about the house. Mm -hmm. So if it's an old farmhouse, we're going to decorate it with the old farmhouse looking furniture. This one, when we got it in, we thought, you know what, this kind of looks like a 1970s colonial. Mm -hmm. So we decorated it with all items that are actually from the 70s or looked like they were from the 70s. Mm -hmm. So this house actually has velvet paintings in it, which are pretty interesting. From the 70s, uh -huh. and velvet uh -huh. paintings were really popular in the 70s and 80s, I believe. Oh. I had one on my bedroom wall It was a clown. Oh, really? And I remember being scared of it. This house over here, we, we're calling it the town doctor mm -hmm. because we had a doctor's office set up here. Mm -hmm. um, we've sold some of the items out of it and now we've made it into a vet's office. <laughs> this house is beautiful. It's got really nice hardwood floors, really nice uh, wainscoting and beadboard. Um, but my favorite feature of the house is in the attic up there there's actually a spider's web with spiders on and i love how they designed the the attic with the rafters and everything it looks very real one of our uh more incredible dollhouses in the museum mm -hmm. we we go all over new england picking up dollhouses mm -hmm. and this one was actually from poland maine this dollhouse is actually a model of a home mm -hmm. uh, in South Dartmouth, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's a 19-room salt box colonial, okay. and I think it was six bedrooms, five bathrooms. Mm -hmm. But uh, a local attorney actually made this dollhouse as a model of his real home. So over here, this was the grandmother's in-law apartment, uh -huh. and then the rest of the house was the main house. 52 Barney's Joy Road in South Dartmouth, Massachusetts, an actual picture of the real house. This log cabin over here, we just got in, uh -huh. and pictures and video don't do it justice okay. because it's really large. It's almost four feet by four feet. Uh -huh. um, most log cabins are very small in the dollhouse. It barely fit in my SUV, uh -huh. and I just picked it up this week, and when we got it in, we cleaned it up, and we immediately decorated it. Yeah, this is a Victorian built onto this uh, yard, and I've actually got it on casters so it can be wheeled around. Oh. What's incredible about this one is it's got real copper flashing, mm -hmm. and it actually opens in the front and the back. Oh, wow. So up here, there's actually a little bathroom, mm -hmm. and um, there's actually a beautiful chandelier in this house in the dining room. Looks probably handmade. Uh huh. But in the dollhouse world, usually a Victorian is mm -hmm. kind of the quintessential dollhouse. Okay. Because when people think about a dollhouse, they usually picture a Victorian. All different styles here, so we have colonials and capes and ranches and everything, but Victorian is kind of the, the epitome of a dollhouse house. So we've set up a parade scene here with Clydesdale horses and a beauty queen. And, um, but these are our shops. We've got um, a general store, a toy shop, a barber shop, a music store, a hat shop. We actually, we actually sell out of these too, so if someone sees an accessory they want, you're, they're welcome to grab it. Oh. One of the next things that we plan on setting up here somewhere in the museum is a circus. Mm -hmm.
This is a beautiful dollhouse. This is one actually that has wiring. I just haven't had a chance to get it working. Okay. So when we get old dollhouses in, a lot of times they have electrical wiring. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. This one, I just haven't had a chance to get under there and work on it. But it's a beautiful, solid dollhouse. And that's the thing with dollhouses is a lot of them were really built to last. Mm -hmm. And that's why they end up being family heirlooms and they're passed down. Mm -hmm. But the way that I get dollhouses a lot of times is when they don't have someone to pass it down to uh -huh. and they want to see it go to a good home okay because they know if i buy a dollhouse that i'm gonna take care of it shine it up and just and sell it to someone new who will yeah. right over here mm -hmm. is actually an architectural model of someone's ranch from the 1970s mm -hmm. so the way they built the roof and even the walls mm -hmm. is, is similar to a real home this dollhouse is, I think, six feet long and it barely fit in my SUV. <laughs> uh, we were so nervous that we weren't going to be able to get it here and we got Usually dollhouses, when people build them, they try to build them so that they're not wider than a standard doorway. Mm -hmm. um, this one's wider than a standard You can turn it. So mm -hmm. when you carry this one, you actually oh. you know, carry it sideways. Okay. So. Um, that's what you have to do with some dollhouses. Uh -huh. Like this one behind you. Transported this dollhouse, it took up the entire bed of a pickup truck. They can be really large, and some of the larger dollhouses, people don't know where to put them. Mm -hmm. A lot of people end up putting them on their dining room tables. Okay. Because so many people don't use their dining rooms anymore. Uh -huh. So they'll put a dollhouse on it if they're working on one. But this is a beautiful dollhouse. It's one of my favorites in the shop. Oh. Yeah. The outside of it is incredible, really beautifully done, detailed. Mm -hmm. huh. This house, if you look at the front of it, mm -hmm. um, around the other side here, okay. what's incredible about it is all the detail. Yeah, it's an incredible dollhouse. I actually bought that one sight unseen. I was out of the country, mm -hmm. came available for sale, so I, I had a friend pick it up for me. Over here, this Victorian, they say in the dollhouse world that if you have a really large dollhouse, uh -huh. like a Victorian mansion or something, uh -huh. that you should do a court with this one. Oh my God. You've got a greenhouse and a gazebo, wow. a driveway. But this one actually opens from the front uh -huh. and the back, uh -huh. and it's just really beautifully done. The thing with dollhouses is you could spend a lifetime adding details to them, you know? Yes. Sometimes people will ask me, you know, what do you do when you're done with it? Hmm. And I say, well, you don't have to be done. You can keep collecting meaningful items for it. Yes. And you can just kind of appreciate it. So this house we were calling the town doctor. Okay. It was one of the nicer homes in the, in the village we, we have here. Mm -hmm. And it, we had a doctor's office set up in it. This house right here behind you, mm -hmm. we call it the pumpkin cottage because of the color. I love it. I feel like it ha looks historic uh -huh. um, with the front door here and the chimney. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about this dollhouse is when they put the fireplace in, they actually made the chimney hollow. Okay. So the fireplace actually goes into the chimney. Uh -huh. And Kayla and I found a kit recently that creates smoke. And oh. we were thinking of making the chimney smoke, we'll just, you know, have to pop a hole there. Oh. But i um, excited about trying to do something like that. Yeah, we decorated this dollhouse actually last week or two. Mm -hmm. um, in, I did it in a haunted theme. Mm -hmm. So everything's black, red, and For gold. the Halloween? Yeah, for Halloween. Okay. And, and then we have the cast of The Wizard of Oz set up in there. Uh-huh. But um, what's cool about this house is a lot of the pieces in there were customized by myself or my oh, employee okay so like the fireplaces are hand painted mm -hmm. the uh, sofa was custom upholstered okay um, just a lot of little handmade things and um, the bed is hand dressed over there oh <laughs> that's one that I did Wow. Um, <laughs> I love the jewelry box up <laughs> over here we have dollhouses from different decades Yep. 
So, I mean, I was born in the 80s, and I fell in love with this hobby as a very young boy. Uh -huh. But my family, we really couldn't afford a dollhouse. We were trying to keep a real house. I didn't get a dollhouse until I was about 16, and mm -hmm. I, it was because I had my own job and my own money. Yes. So I bought two dollhouses. Oh. And then my private collection grew to about 20 dollhouses. I opened a shop and I now have a hundred dollhouses in here. That's really inspiring. <laughs> it, it, it is, but I've actually met customers who have more. I've met customers with 150 dollars. I asked them, I said, where do you store them? And they, they said in like a she shed, but oh. when they showed me a picture of it, it was the size of a barn. Oh. <laughs> this dollhouse right here is in, a, we call it the apartment building. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this house is, I guess they used it in a Sunday school mm -hmm. to teach Italian kids English. Okay. And the other thing that's interesting is all of the room dividers are movable. So you, you can actually set it up however you want. Okay. You could do a one bedroom apartment, a two bedroom, two -bedroom apartment, or a studio yes. apartment. Here, we've actually created um, like an art gallery, a dollhouse shop. Um, on the top floor, we have like a studio apartment. Uh huh. But we really, we really take time um, making our houses come to life. It takes lots of time. It does. Believe me, I just did one miniature kitchen. Yep. <laughs> I know how hard it is oh, yeah. just to build a small kitchen. I know how hard yeah. it is. And your kitchen is beautiful. Thank you. This is one of our Christmas sections we have in the shop. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of these accessories are handmade. Um, like this little trunk is something that I actually filled with presents and books and ornaments. And then down this way, this is all of our living room sets. Wow. We have a lot of handmade curtains over here. We have a lot of fireplaces and sofas and chairs. Here, this is some of the designs that I've done. So when I do a design, I will sometimes put it all together. Um, and then the pieces are sold individually, but mm -hmm. this is to show people, mm -hmm. you know, what we sell. And I love this one up here. Pieces are have been upholstered uh -huh. and the pillows are handmade, the curtains are handmade, the clock is handmade. Wow. This street right here is our commercial street. Mm -hmm. So we have a cafe, okay. a general store, a schoolhouse, mm -hmm. a church, Mm -hmm. Another schoolhouse, mm -hmm. a shop, another shop. Here we have another Christmas section. Mm -hmm. We do uh, Christmas trees. We have lots of ornaments and decorations for sale. Uh, we do sleighs. Uh, we really have some beautiful Christmas trees that I'll have to show you. Yeah. Here is all of our cast iron stuff. These are really interesting because I've seen people actually cook meals on these little candle in the bottom yes and then not recommended for young children to do but yes. um but it's really interesting i was told that these were actually salesman samples so way back when if you were ordering a stove you would get a sample of it and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's interesting about these is you know they're cast iron so they're it, heavy they're very heavy and they would last forever yes so, i mean even if the building burnt down these would still survive okay <laughs> But we have a lot of cast iron stoves and we have a lot of clawfoot tubs in our bathroom.
Mm -hmm. In our display cases is where we put some of our handmade, our signed, our, our more rare pieces. So this case, we actually have been putting all of our German uh, dollhouse items. Uh, some of our antique or vintage items go in this case. Mm -hmm. And then we have accessories and furniture on all these shelves. Down here is actually most of our hand-dressed beds that we sell. Over here we have a lot of beautiful pieces, um, even down here we have a handmade, um, uh, sorry, witch. That's so so there's an artist in the UK that uh -huh. paints the faces and does the molds, okay. and then I have a friend in Michigan who dresses them for me. Oh! Uh, there's a beautiful handmade dress down here, it's gorgeous. Oh my god. So it was created as if it was in progress, so it was I think, you know, about half complete. One side looks finished, the other side isn't. We have a, a widow doll, mm -hmm. and she's actually crying with her handkerchief. Beautiful flower arrangements that we put together. Oh my god. Really beautiful pieces in there. And some more beautiful beds and sofas and some handmade pieces and there's some, I really like this pink bed down. Lots of pillows, I love that. I have a customer who builds these little dollhouses for us, okay. and she actually puts furniture in them. Aww. So they're really incredible. This was a really uh, cool kit that you could get. Um, really cool. This dollhouse here is a Keystone dollhouse. This is very really artistic. Yeah, this was a company in Boston that uh -huh. made dollhouses from 1935 to 1955. Okay. So we believe this one actually may have been from the 40s, uh -huh. and it's really cute. It came with all the original furniture, and oh. it's um, it's adorable. Seriously. We have these little Victorian cottages here, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. these houses with our sale are only $150. So, oh. you know, like I said, a lot of our houses are in the $100 to mm -hmm. $300, $400 mm -hmm. range, mm -hmm. um, especially with our sale. So we've started furnishing this one, okay. but we've still got a furnish this one.
and guys there is so much to explore here and i tried to cover most of it so let's wrap up with interesting chit chat with nathaniel the founder of flip this doll house so my background is in business and um interior design so i uh went to school originally for business and then i went back to school for interior design and it's funny because i didn't think i would end up running a dollhouse shop but my background really led me here all of my experience and education led me to this exact job houses for 20 years wow and i've been selling them as a business for 10 years and i really started selling them so that i could keep rescuing them i really wanted to be able to keep collecting dollhouses and saving them Um, they're like animals to me, and I consider myself a rescue shelter instead of a puppy mill. <laughs> kind of what we're about at Flip This Dollhouse is selling dollhouses that need some love. So I've been in business for ten years now, mm -hmm. and I've just been slowly growing the mm -hmm. business for these ten years mm -hmm. while doing interior design in full size. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, started off at a flea market mm -hmm. with a small booth, mm -hmm. and I started off selling on eBay and then Etsy. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've just slowly grown my shop, and to the point that it is now one of the largest shops in the world. Seeing everyone's face when they come in the shop, and it's funny because even people who aren't into dollhouses, mm -hmm. they will come in and have the same reaction. Mm -hmm. It's not something they collect, but mm -hmm. they are just fascinated by the idea. So the oldest dollhouse we have right now is from the 1930s. Wow! And then we have a couple houses from the 40s and 50s mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting thing about dollhouses is, if you research online. They actually date back to the 1400s, mm -hmm. and the original purpose of a dollhouse was actually to teach little girls how to run a household. Yes. So it was really an instructional tool, mm -hmm. and um, I think maybe a lot of toys were like that back then. So when we get a new dollhouse in, we always take a look at it and we try to figure out the style of the home or the era of the home. So if a house comes in and it looks like it was from the 1970s, and we're going to try to decorate it in a 1970s theme. Mm -hmm. um, we love creating stories and themes for our dollhouses. We do a little bit. We mainly get into the decorating of the dollhouse, uh -huh. not not the building, but we really get into decorating them and staging them to yeah. sell. Okay. So yeah. if a customer brings his own dollhouse and if they want to uh, make some decoration or changes, you will do that. Absolutely, oh, we help great. customers with their dollhouses all the time. Wow, okay. We actually have customers all over the world that we create uh, custom rooms for. Oh, that's great. Yep. Yeah. The history of the houses is really important to me. Mm -hmm. I call it the provenance. Mm -hmm. So I really like to share that with mm -hmm. people because mm -hmm. it, it's part of the house's story. You know, yes. where did it come from? Who made it? Yes. Um, the log cabin that we just picked up this mm -hmm. week, uh, I guess, was made by a, a paraplegic man mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Texas, mm -hmm. and it's incredible. The work is incredible inside yeah. of it. So I love knowing the stories to the house. We always, when we're buying a dollhouse from someone, we make sure we ask as many questions as we can, mm -hmm. and then we will research online to mm -hmm. figure out if, if we don't know, mm -hmm. we'll try to figure out mm -hmm. uh, who made it, what mm -hmm. company, where was it from. Um, how old is it? Mm -hmm. We always uh, we really get into the research part of it, okay. and we get really excited about learning. The best compliment, I think, the best compliment to get is when someone tells them how happy their dollhouse makes them and how much joy they get from it. Yes. And that's why I really enjoy interacting with customers. And I do sell online, but I prefer interacting with customers in person and helping them design their dollhouse and help helping them pick out the right items for it. Mm -hmm. um, when they come in and they tell me they have a farmhouse, mm -hmm. I'm going to pick out a bunch of farmhouse items for them. Um, but on their own, they might not be able to find those items. Yes. So I really, when I'm in the shop, I, I sell product, but I also sell my design skills. Okay. You know. Actually, I was telling someone earlier today uh -huh. that uh, one couple that uh -huh. inspired me in the miniatures world is uh -huh. um, Noel and Pat Thomas. Uh -huh. And Noel and Pat Thomas, if you look them up, they built beautiful Victorian dollhouses in the 70s and 80s. 
and they would be incredibly detailed, but they would age every square inch of the house. Mm -hmm. um, they would use like a gray wash or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful that these houses would sell for thirty to forty thousand dollars in the seventies and eighties. Wow. That's a lot of money back then. Wow. Yeah. So they kind of inspired me. And when I collect and when I look for houses, I always think of how realistic their houses looked. Um, they would even, you know, put ashes in the house to make it smell like a cigar or, or whatnot. Yeah. And it was just incredible. Uh huh. If I'm decorating a dollhouse for a customer, I mean, I've spent, you know, maybe 20, 30 hours sometimes on a bigger dollhouse. Okay. And every little decision matters. Yes. Every little thing you pick out yes. um, is thought about, you know. Made this dollhouse behind me, spent four years building it, Aww. and um, it's incredible. So we post thousands of pictures on our Facebook and our Instagram mm -hmm. of all of our inventory, our dollhouses, our furniture, and our accessories. Mm -hmm. And we actually sell directly on our Facebook. Mm -hmm. So if someone ever sees a dollhouse or a piece of furniture or anything that they're interested in, mm -hmm. they can just comment or send us a message. I flip this dollhouse on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram and I'm also on Etsy. Okay. Yeah, we ship packages all over the world. and. And it's funny because we just shipped some packages to uh, Belgium and Australia and Kayla likes to write a little note with each one mm -hmm. and I think they really appreciate that place. One thing I always say to people that are creating dollhouse uh, items, whether it's furniture, accessories or whatnot is, and this is kind of similar in the art world, mm -hmm. that sometimes when you're making something in miniature, if you make a mistake, it might not necessarily be a mistake, yes. it could be what I call a beautiful accident mm -hmm. and so sometimes we're working on something and maybe we'll break something or, or we, we will do something not the way we had intended but then we'll run with it mm -hmm. so sometimes um, I think some beautiful things are created mm -hmm. in that way mm -hmm. so everything doesn't always have to be perfect say if you haven't been in mm -hmm. to our shop mm -hmm. we're definitely worth a trip mm -hmm. um, check us out we have customers that come from all over the country and um, sometimes they've driven hours to be here and I think our shop is well worth the trip it's a lot of fun and it's a very happy place uh -huh. thank you so much for coming uh -huh. say bye bye thank you <laughs> so guys I hope you really enjoyed this video and I'm planning to upload few more interesting dollhouses interior in detail which I like it most personally in this shop. So do subscribe my channel and stay tuned for more interesting miniature content. Meanwhile check out my channel for awesome real miniature cooking and pottery videos and I'm sure you will love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do like, share and subscribe if you haven't yet. Bye bye. See you soon in the next episode.